Hello there! I'm Professor Oak, and welcome to my research lab. I may be more commonly known as the Pokemon Professor, but not many people know that back in college, I double majored in theology alongside Pokemon studies. More specifically, I have an interest in angelology, the study of the divine beings present in many different belief systems. It's for that purpose I've invited a photographer like yourself here to Angel Island to help me observe many different types of angels and their supernatural habitat. But before you set out to find me the perfect shots, let's have a quick overview of what these magnificent creatures are. Angels are celestial beings, which act as guardians or messengers. Depictions of these beings go back thousands of years. There have even been ancient Sumerian statues of winged guardian beings that have been discovered that were made over 3,000 years ago. And who knows how much older the belief in these sorts of beings is. The most influential belief system contributing to the modern conception of angels would have to be Judaism. In Judaism, angels likely started out as minor deities serving under the senior god, Yahweh, in a divine council, also known as the Heavenly Host. When Judaism transitioned from a polytheistic religion, with a supreme god and minor gods below it, to a completely monotheistic system following the Israelites' exile to Babylon from about 600 to 520 BC, angels were demoted from godhood to just being servants created by the single god. The term angel took a strange path to becoming part of the English language. In the Hebrew Torah, the servants of God were simply referred to by the Hebrew word malach, simply meaning messenger. The word didn't specifically refer to angels. In fact, the word was used for any sort of messenger in the Torah, including human being messengers. Then, in the Septuagint, which was a translation of the Torah created by Greek-speaking Jews in Alexandria, Egypt in the 200s BC, the word malach was translated to angelos, the Greek word for messenger. However, when this Greek version of the Torah was used as the basis of the Latin Old Testament by early Christians, they translated the word differently based on the context. When the messenger is clearly a human, terms like nuntius or legatus were used, but if the messenger is supernatural, they simply adapted the Greek word angelos as angelus. This is the origin of the English word angel after a pass through Middle French, of course. But enough talk, have at you. Go out and take pictures of as many different types of angels on the island as you can. Once you return to the lab, I'll grade them based on how important they are to my research or something like that. Good luck. This must be a seraph. Seraph, or plural seraphim, are the top ranked angels in the hierarchy of angels in Christian belief, but consider the fifth rank in Jewish angelology. The name seraph comes from a Hebrew term meaning the burning one. They are traditionally described as having six wings, two covering its face, two covering its feet, and two that it uses to fly. Their job is to encircle the throne of God, singing the word holy, holy, holy over and over again. Apparently that's all it does. Its body is also apparently supposed to be full of eyes. Hmm, this photograph you got. I see the angels right in the middle of the frame. Good job on that. It's also taking up almost the entire frame. However, it seems that this one might have too many sets of wings. Also, while it's depicted as having many eyes, it is maybe not quite full of eyes as is described in scripture. Overall, this picture is okay, but I think you can do better. This seems to be... Ah, 
It's the angel Moroni. This was the angel of light, who, according to the tenets of Mormonism, revealed the location of the golden plates to Joseph Smith in 1823, near his farm in upstate New York. These plates were then translated by Joseph Smith into what is known today as the Book of Mormon. Hmm, it looks like we have an action shot of Moroni blowing a trumpet which is a common visual representation of Moroni and a symbol of Mormonism itself. It's in the center of the frame, and the size is quite good. Wonderful! Lots of points for you. What do we have here? It looks like we have a Fravashi. A Fravashi was a so-called personal spirit in Zoroastrianism, the national religion of the ancient Persians, which is still practiced to this very day. The Fravashi is similar to a guardian angel. It has the role of sending an individual's soul into the world to participate in the cosmic battle of good versus evil, which is a central tenet of Zoroastrianism. Hmm. The picture does have the old man in the middle, who represents wisdom of a virtuous mind. You can clearly see the three layers of feathers in the wings. This is a traditional aspect of portrayals of the Fravashi. The three layers of feathers represent good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. The three layered tail feathers, on the other hand, represent bad thoughts, bad words, and bad deeds, which should be avoided. The circle in the middle represents the cycle of life and the wholeness of the being. The size of the angel in the frame is so-so, but it's right in the middle, which is really the main thing that matters. All in all, it was pretty great. This photo seems to depict the angel Matarael from the Book of Enoch, which is an apocryphal work of scripture which wasn't included in most versions of the Bible, but is considered a normal part of the Bible in the Ethiopian church. Matarael is described as the angel of rains in the Book of Enoch. This seems to show Matarael secreting acid, which does seem to follow the theme of rain. There is no specific physical description of the angel in Enoch, but the eyes we see covering the body does match the description of many types of angels in scripture. Both of these photos are in the middle of the frame, but the action shot showing the secretion of the acid is too close to make out the entire angel. Overall, it's an acceptable effort. Are these... Cherubim? The cherub was traditionally considered the second in the hierarchy of angels in Christianity. The Bible described them as being tetramorphs, having four wings and four heads. One human, which represents humanity. One a lion's head, representing the wild animals that live upon the land. Another an ox, representing domesticated animals. And the last an eagle, representing birds. Apparently, fish aren't important enough to make the cut. However, this picture doesn't seem to match the description at all. Ah, I see. These actually aren't angels. These are putti. Putti, or putto in singular, were originally winged small boys, modeled after descriptions of the Roman gods Cupid and Eros. These figures originally appeared as decorative motifs on the sarcophagi of children. Over a thousand years later, Italian Renaissance artists took inspiration from these ancient Roman remains and incorporated images of the Pucci into many different works. But these figures somehow got associated with the biblical cherubim. And nowadays, these Pucci are much more well-known depictions of cherubim than the actual description in scripture. You were close. Since these aren't even angels, I'm afraid I can't award you any points for this picture. It appears you took a different picture of a chariot. This photograph is much different from the last. We can see in this picture, the four different heads of the chariot are clearly defined. The separation between the two different pair of wings is not completely clear, but it is visible if you look closely. The cherub's body is also covered with a multitude of eyes. This feature is not ordinarily associated with cherubim. However, it is a common motif for many higher-ranking angels in Christianity, which overall makes it appropriate. Wonderful! This picture is much better than the last one. Good job! Here are some points or something, I don't know. Welcome back!
back. Well, Todd, thank you for helping me out with my angel research today. However, I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. I'm expecting some special company coming over soon, and having a prepubescent photographer around isn't the sort of vibe I'm going for. Now get the hell out of here! See you! And that's another episode of Shonen Flop Gaiden in the Can. Sorry this one is so freaking late. This video project turned out to be really complicated and time-consuming, and I'm probably going to be taking a step back from spending so much time on this stuff going forward. Also, getting bronchitis in the middle of things didn't help at all. As always, I've been your host, Tucker Whatley. In the Discord server, I am just Tucker, so feel free to chat with me there. You can find my portfolio of work, writing, and radio stuff, and more at tuckerwhatley.com. That's T-U-C-K-E-R-W-H-A-T-L-E-Y.com. You can find me at Twitter, at Tucker Whatley, spelt the same way, no punctuation. Whew, this was a toughie. But I hope you enjoyed it. See you, Space Cowboy. Perfect! Wow, wow, wow. Here is a present for you. It's the sky. I'm Professor Oak. Blah, 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 blah. Malak. 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 Let me try that again. Malak. 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 Simply meaning messenger. Blah, blah, blah. I'm Professor Oak. Welcome to my Pokemon lab. I want to fuck you really, really hard. Welcome to my Pokemon lab, Todd. I want to fuck you. I'm Professor Oak. I'm horny for Pokemon. But enough talk. <coughs> you can also clearly see these nuts.